Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm glad you found it. Since this is the first video of the channel, I'll introduce myself. I'm a mobile application developer primarily working on iOS applications. I design and develop iOS applications as well as mentor new recruits. I also have experience working as an Android application developer and therefore provide guidance to the Android team as well at my workplace. So that's it about me and the channel. Here I wish to show some coding examples, tutorials, tech talks and so on, primarily revolving around mobile application development. Now let's begin this tutorial. In this video, I'm going to start out with a very basic task of creating a UI collection view in an iOS application. I chose this topic even though it's a very trivial task, is to keep it it's basically just to keep it simple. So let's begin. Every app that you use would likely have some sort of a list. A list of movies, a collection of pictures. More often than not, a collection view is used to bring such contents to the app. Let's take a quick look at how to make one yourself. Let's start by creating a new Xcode project. Select single view application. Name your project My Collection View Project. Click next. Save it any way you want. First things first, we're gonna delete this file, this view controller file, and we're gonna create a new group called controllers. Within this group, I'm gonna create a new file a new Swift file. I'm gonna name it Home Controller. Import UI kit into the file. Create a class Home Controller, which extends to UI View Controller. First of all, you override the view to load and call the super.viewToDload method within it. I'm gonna call another method initViews inside the view to load. We haven't declared this method yet, so I'm gonna extend the home controller. And I'm gonna define the method there, function initViews. The initViews method will be used to initiate the subviews we require for this view controller and assign properties required for these subviews to exist. I use this method to assign the layout constraints as required. Before going any further, I'm gonna go to the top of the view controller and declare a UI collection view named as M collection view. and also a layout property, which is of type UI collection view flow layout, which we will later use to initiate the collection view. I have put an exclamation mark after UI collection view and UI collection view flow layout. What this means is that I'm telling the compiler that the values of these properties will never be null when accessed. Okay, now we shall move to the init view method and initiate the properties we just declared. I'm gonna initiate the layout property that we just declared with layout equals UI collection view flow layout dot init. I'll have to set the layout's estimated item size, which is of type CG size. What this essentially means is we are deciding how much the width and height of each cell which we'll populate in the collection view will be. I'm gonna give the width as views bound dot width, which is essentially the which is the width of the view controller. I am going to minus 40 from the width which will 
be the padding for the UI collection view. And I'm going to give a height of 40. Next up, we'll have to specify the minimum inter item spacing. I'm going to set it to 10. Next, we'll have to specify the minimum line spacing for the layout. I'm going to set it to 10. That is all that is required for the layout for now. We're going to go forward and initiate the My Collection view with My Collection view equals UI Collection view dot init with a CG rect and a layout. We're going to assign the CG rect as dot zero and we're going to assign the collection view layout as the layout we just made. Let's add the My Collection view to the controller's view with view dot add sub view my collection view which will add the collection view to the view controllers view now that the collection view is initiated and added to the parent view we need to tell the compiler where to display the collection view and how big it must be i see that this is a hard concept for new developers to grasp so i'll explain it further in a later tutorial the basic concept is to construct a set of simple rules which would define the frame in which the view will be displayed. I'm going to start by setting the translate auto resizing mask into constraint property of the collection view to false. This would allow us to manually set the auto layout constraints for our my collection view. Let's just keep this very simple for now and say that the collection view must be 20 pixels from the top 20 pixel from the right, left, and bottom. Let's go. Let's add a left constraint to the collection view. Collection view dot left anchor dot constraint equals view dot left anchor constant 20 dot is active equals true. This means that the collection view's left anchor is going to be at an offset of 20 pixels from the left anchor of the view of view controller. We will repeat the same for the right constraint of the collection view. Only now that the offset must be minus 20 pixels. We will copy and paste the same for the top and bottom anchor and make changes at a few places. That is it for the constraints. We'll go now to the storyboard file and change the class name of the initial controller to our controller class, that is home controller. This will make sure that the application starts in our home controller. If you run the application now, you will only see a black frame of the collection view. Nothing will be displayed in it. Let's start populating a very simple list of hello world texts. We need to first set the delegate and data source of the collection view as self. Here self is the home controller. Now we are required to extend our home controller to UI collection view delegate and data source protocols. Conforming to these protocols would mean that our controller must now override self for row at index path and number of items in section methods. This will eventually allow the collection view to know how many cells it must display and what each cell must display. Pretty simple. For the first method, we're just going to return 3 for now. 
and for the sulfur item in the next part we're gonna construct a, a collection view sub let's sell equals collection view dot dq reusable cell with identifier we're gonna give a string some identifier here for index path and we're gonna return that cell what this means is for every item that the collection view is supposed to populate it's gonna create a collection view cell which is registered to the collection view with an identifier some identifier now we can go ahead and register a collection view cell class with my collection view dot register ui collection view cell dot self for an identifier that we defined in our protocol method Uh, sorry some identifier now we can go ahead and give the background color of the cell as red just so that you can see it if we run the application now what we should expect to see is a collection view with black background color with three cells each with red background color and each of these cells should be of the size we mentioned in our collection view layout. Now to customize the collection view cells, we're going to go ahead and create a new, new group called views in which we're going to create a new file, a SWIFT file. And we're going to name it my custom cell. Now import UI kit into the file. Now define the class my custom cell which extends to ui collection view cell the initiation method that we require here is layout sub views we have to override it and call super dot layout sub views within it we also need an init rect so Let's just override init CG with cg rect and call super init with frame. This will also require us to override another method within that method. Just write super dot init coder a decoder. Let's just copy and paste these two methods and paste it below this code so that it won't get in our way. We only need this layout of these methods for now. Let's just initiate a label of type UI label. And now we're going to add the layout to, as a sub view of the UI collection we saw and then set the layout constraints within this layout sub views. First label dot translate auto recessive mask into constraint equals false. Then we're going to set two constraints. One is for the left anchor label dot left anchor dot constraints equal to self dot left anchor and a constant 30 dot is active equals true now we're gonna center it to the y-axis so label dot center y anchor dot constraints equals self dot center y anchor constant zero dot is active equals true Now that our custom collection view cell is ready, we can go back to our controller and register this cell with our collection view. We will now have to go to the cell for item at index path method and explicitly say that the cell that you're gonna find is my custom cell. Now that the cell is of type my custom cell, 
we can access the label that we created in our custom cell class and change the text as hello world. Now let's run the project and see the results. There it is, the text hello world in our custom cell repeated three times as expected. Someone who just started out with iOS application development might misunderstand that this cell for item and number of items per section methods must always be overridden in the controller. This is of course not true. Almost any class can be set as the delegate and data source of a collection view. I will give you an example by setting an NS string as the delegate and data source of a collection view. Let's start by declaring a variable my string of that ns string. This has to be ns string. And in our init views method, I'm gonna give it a value hello world. And for the collection view dot delegate, we're gonna set it as my string. Same for the data source. This will mean that the class NS string must now confirm to this protocol's UI collection view delegate and data source. So we're gonna extend NS string to UI collection view delegate and UI collection view data source. The rest is as we did before. We'll have to override the required methods. For the number of cells, I'm going to return self.length, which is the number of characters in a string. And for the cell, we're going to create a cell with let cell equals collection view dot dq reusable cell with identifier. The same identifier that we used before, some identifier for index path, index path as my custom cell. And we're gonna return the cell. Now for the label, we're gonna set cell.label.text equals self.substring with ns range dot init location index path dot row with length one here self is the inner string what this means is we're capturing the character at index path dot row in the string and then putting that as the text value for our label let's set the background color as red and run the application there you have it now that the inner string is the delegate and data source of the collection view, the string is used to populate the cells and its values. All right, that's it for today's tutorial. I hope this was helpful for some of you. I'll be back with another tutorial. Till then, goodbye.